It is nothing more, and so I often tell my mother when she is grieving about it. My dear madam, I always say to her, you must make yourself easy. The evil is now irremediable, and it has been entirely your own doing. Why would you be persuaded by my uncle, Sir Robert, against your own judgment to place Edward under private tuition at the most critical time of his life? If you had only sent him to Westminster as well as myself, instead of sending him to Mr. Pratt's, all this would have been prevented. This is the way in which I always consider the matter, and my mother is perfectly convinced of her error. Eleanor would not oppose his opinion, because whatever might be her general estimation of the advantage of a public school, she could not think of Edward's abode in Mr. Pratt's family with any satisfaction. You reside in Devonshire, I think, was his next observation. In a cottage near Dawlish. Eleanor set him right as to the situation, and it seemed rather surprising to him that anybody could live in Devonshire without living near Dawlish. He bestowed his hearty appropriation, however, on their species of house. For my own part, said he, I am excessively fond of a cottage. There is always so much comfort, so much elegance about them, and I protest, if I ever had any money to spare, I should buy a little land and build one myself within a short distance of London, where I might drive myself down at any time, and collect a few friends about me, and be happy. I advise everybody who is going to build, to build a cottage. My friend Lord Cortland came to me the other day on purpose to ask my advice, and laid before me three different plans of bonhomies. I was to decide on the best of them. My dear Cortland, said I, immediately throwing them all into the fire, do not adopt either of them, but by all means build a cottage, and that, I fancy, will be the end of it. Some people imagine that there can be no accommodations, no space in a cottage, but this is all a mistake. I was last month at my friend Elliot's, near Dorford. Lady Elliot wished to give a dance, but how can it be done, said she. My dear Ferrers, do tell me how it is to be managed. There is not a room in this cottage that will hold ten couple, and where can the supper be? I immediately saw that there could be no difficulty in it. So I said, my dear Lady Elliot, do not be uneasy. The dining parlour will admit eighteen couple with ease. Card tables may be placed in the drawing room. The library may be open for tea and other refreshments, and let the supper be set out in the saloon. Lady Elliot was delighted with the thought. We measured the dining room and found it would hold exactly 18 couple, and the affair was arranged precisely after my plan. So that, in fact, you see, if people do but know how to set about it, every comfort may be as well enjoyed in a cottage as in the most spacious dwelling.